Hello makers. By now you've probably already seen this project in the Tim Holtz live reveal for the 2022 Tim Holtz ideology Halloween release. What a great release, isn't it? I just really absolutely love it. So, so many great things and things that you can use all year round as well. So today's the make that I want to talk about is it particularly Halloween. However, Poe does kind of uh, get to be, you know, read and get a lot of attention during Halloween time period because he did write some macabre stories uh, and all his poems and things a lot sound uh, follow, you know, the theme of death and mourning because he was uh, a, just a very sad soul. Uh, so I thought I would do an ode to Poe and that's what this is. I am going to talk about all the things that I used to make this uh, in a few minutes. I'm going to then show you how I made some of it. And then at the end, I'm going to go through this whole project again, and I'm going to show you all the different references to Edgar Allan Poe and his many works uh, from his lifetime, either poems or maybe his short stories. All right. So, before we get started on all the things that you need to make it, and before I start talking about what a lot of these uh, reveal, I just wanted to give you one quick look over it again. And I'm sure that if you are an Edgar Allan Poe fan that you have already picked up many of the stories or poems that I have referenced in this piece. And there are only a few of them. Um, so I could probably do another one of these another year uh, if I wanted because there are so many left uh, for him. But I'm really happy with this one and how it turned out and all the ones that I did reference. So I'll talk about those, like I said, at the very end. But before I do, let's get started with what you need to make this project or to make some of the things that I, uh, that I made in it. And... Uh, then I will show you a little bit how to make the different parts. Now, I will not be t showing how I made every single book because I've already done two tutorials on how to turn the vignette trays and vignette boxes into books. So I will link those in the description here and also on my blog. And so you can check that out. I use the same technique that I used in both of those uh, videos and tutorials. All right, so let's get started talking about what we need to make an ode to Poe. I have planned to use for this piece a small vignette tray as the base, which I'm going to make into a book, and then the two smallest vignette boxes, which I also plan to make into books. On this one for the cover, not for the binding, I'll use probably just cardstock for the binding, but for the cover that's going to be facing out, I'm going to use this piece from the, uh, this would be the, the Halloween ephemera, and it says The Life of Edgar Allan Poe. And so I'm gonna have this be a book on his life that is going to be facing out. And this whole thing is going to be um, more the works from the life of Edgar Allan Poe. So I'm going to base this on, that's why there's so many books. So although he wrote short stories and poems, um, I'm going to, you know, a lot of those were compiled into books or, you know, originally published in magazines actually, but nonetheless, I'm going to um, make this all about books. So of course, uh, in in here uh, on top I'm going to have a card file and I'm debating on whether I'm leaving this or not I thought it would be cool if I put you know E A Po or if I found the Dewey Decimal section for where you know Po would be and I put that there something like that anyway and I, so I'm using this as a bookshelf again which uh, I used originally uh, when when this piece was released in the spring. 
So I am going to put, again, a whole bunch of the books that I absolutely love. So those will be scattered throughout. And then I'm going to kind of go through and see what I can find as far as things that I think would be in his study because this is going to be a study. So of course, you know, I'm going to also in there have some candle, drippy candles, candelabras, that kind of thing. I will also, uh, in this section, I'm going to have a frame with an eye in it and uh, that will be from the Telltale Heart. And then uh, on top of here, I'm going to try and do some like floorboards or something uh, with wood. And I'm not quite sure again how to do that because it's just a little section of his study. So I'm not exactly sure. And I may have to do it on the bottom shelf or something like that. But I'm going to do a cutaway and I'm going to put this heart uh, in there so that it's kind of under the floorboards from, again, the Telltale Heart. So we'll see how that goes. And if I think that the one eye is a little bit too big, because this is kind of big, I might use the smaller eye. So I pulled both of those to see, but most likely I'm just gonna put this into a, uh, like a frame uh, to be more of a kind of inspiration. And I may kind of end up doing the same for this. I may have this in a frame, just kind of with wood around it, like a wooden box frame or something, just so that maybe Poe is just kind of you know, using those as inspiration in his study. And then I thought, you know, I might have, uh, I might cut some of these up and lay them around like these were bits of his writing um, and they kind of had fallen on the floor or whatever as he's thinking and writing. On this side of these, and so on the back side, I have a large vignette box and I'll talk about that in a minute, but they're gonna go like this. And so on this side, I am going to have the door to his chamber, which is why his chamber is going to be on this side over here. And so I'm going to have the door over there and I will have the large raven on the door. And I'm going to try and shape the raven so that it is kind of, you know, sticking out a little bit. And also I'm going to spray it with the uh, distress resist spray. I can't find my bottle right now. I'm not sure where it's at, but with distress resist spray so that it is, uh, dark and shiny and it also will add some, uh, depth to it. And so I will have him on wrapping on the chamber door. All right. So that will be happening over there. And then, uh, I'm, so I'm going to have these are going to be small books that will be against his chamber door and against this, which I'm also going to make into a book. And so that will be out this way. So on these two sides, it will be like a book. And then when you turn it around, you will see this. And I have left over, where did I put it? I have a side of one of my vignette boxes that I took apart for another project. And so I am going to put that across here so that it makes it smaller. And then I'm going to have this on there and I'm going to put brick in here and I am going to fill it with, so see this basically fits then. Uh, so I'm going to put these on, the doors on, and I am just going to fill it with <clears throat> a bunch of skulls and one of the barrels that um, will be facing out so that it, it represents the cask of Amontillado story from Italy. Then... And it was down in the catacombs. So, and then also maybe hanging in there above the skulls, I may have some of the bats kind of hanging down and a few kind of getting ready to fly. So I would have them kind of, you know, getting ready to fly. Then I'm going to try and have these books on an angle like this so that... So 
show it to you so that it would be kind of like that. And then underneath on the back side, I'm going to have some coins and a gold bug. And that's from the treasure story. Um, and on, I think on this front side in the front corner, I'm going to put, so this will still be here, on the front side in the front corner, I'm going to put a little bit of something that looks like the sea or the ocean. And I'm going to have a tomb by the sea. Um, and that is his Annabelle Lee. So I'm going to have that on there. And I'm trying to think. Um, I think that's most of the stories I was going to do. I was thinking the uh, if I had a black cat, I was going to try and fit a black cat in somewhere. And I was also going to try and fit in a few. I might look through my regular snippets and try and find a couple of letters that I could uh, stick in for the... Um, which one was that? Uh, it was his first detective short story where he finds the letter um, that was hiding in plain sight. So uh, I will link to how to make these boxes into books. I've done it twice now, and so I don't feel like you need to watch me do it again, but I use the chipboard and I make the kind of edges of the cover of the book, and then I cover it with heavy craft stock and then I start using different papers and things like that to make the books. So I will link to the one that I did for Live Your Story and also the one that I did at Christmas for the Christmas Carol. So uh, that way you can see how to make a large one and also the small ones all into the books. Bringing you up to date, I have the sides of the books done and ready and I am going to build up the binding side and then I will cover them with my heavy stock, uh, craft heavy stock, and uh, put, cover them with some sort of backdrops paper. And then these will be done and pretty much ready to go. I have the sides of, so the then I was going to have a big book on the back of this bookcase here like this so I was gonna have books like this and so I have the book pages and sides done and I'm ready to go with that and then I'll have to put the book binding part on this side and s since it's facing out the part that's facing out I wanted to have a little vignette in this vignette box and so I'm going to put this on here. So I decided this time to build it up. So I just built up with whatever I had within the walls. So this black foam is what comes in between the small and the large vignette trays. And then I had some leftover brick that I had made for another project. And so I just used it to make the sides and kind of form the sides. And then I didn't have enough on this side. And so I just stuck together two different types of brick. And really you're not gonna be able to tell once I get everything in there. I am going to have lights up here, tiny lights up in the top here that you won't be able to see because now that I have this built up, I'm gonna put this over it and then you'll see how it looks kind of like uh, the, the tomb in the catacombs from the Cask of Amontillado where um, uh, Montresor bricks in Fortunato. And so I'm going to put a bunch of uh, skulls and bones and things like that down here. And then I know I did this last year, but I'm going to again put these gates here but I want them open so I have to figure out how to open them and I actually may um, kind of put them off of their 
uh, kind of like they're falling, they're falling down and they're not really closing it in because I want you to be able to see what's in here. So before I actually put this on, this will be the last thing I put on. I need to put this side to kind of give it some stability and then I'm going to have to cut. So once I get this on, then I'll probably just put this right in the center. I'm going to draw a circle and I will cut that out and then trim it back until it is behind this. And then I will cover it Whoops, with this paper and so it'll look like a book and then I will trim out around again before I actually put this in and then start building the scene in there. One thing that I did make that's going to go in the scene and I also again might add this at the top just for added interest because I might still put some of those bats hanging down from the top. For added interest, I know that in the past, uh, a couple of times I have used the spoons for candelabras, and I did that again this year in another project. But for this one, I wanted something a little more gothic and a little more different, so I am using the uh, fork. And I also used one of the skull and crossbones. So I took the fork, and you can see that I bent it forward. So I just took it and completely bent it forward. I'll show you. You get three of each of these. So, so hold it and then I just bent it forward very gently so that it was facing this way. And then I have these needle nose pliers that are round. And so I took, let's see. I took and I held it and I bent it kind of back and tried to bend it over a little bit, kind of around a little bit. And you kind of need to do this gently so it doesn't break off, but you want it facing kind of out. And then you take and you curl it and then curl it some more and then curl it some more and then I still moved it to the side a bit and then I did the same thing with this one pulled it up and over and then you kind of have to keep moving it to make sure that you get it Oops. so that you get it you know flat eventually and you can do them all at once you can do them one at a time and it's easier if you kind of gently keep moving this one out and then up Turning it and then, oops, and then grab it. And rolling it some more. Push it back up. And these aren't going to be perfect, and that's okay because you want it to look kind of old and like, you know, these have been around forever. So, and then I did the same thing. I just pulled these up. Same thing with these. Roll them down so that you end up with something that looks kind of wonky. Um, but when you look at it this way, it kind of looks like uh, an old gothic candelabra and then I'm going to glue a candle in there and that's going to be kind of one of the focal points 
in the back and then the light will kind of shine down on it and illuminate everything from above. All right, so I still have to, you know, get these covered and make all these little books and things like that, but I wanted to update you on that and on the cool candle opera that I made. The latest update, I have the craft stock over each of the box books and this one with this cut out so it's ready to go and I just need to cover all of these now with um, the actual paper so for example this one on here this one's going to go around here etc then I also have, this is the side door that will go between this one and this one. And so it will also have, and I sprayed that. So it's going to have the raven knocking at the chamber door. And then for this one, I have this ready to go once I get it covered. And I have these ready to go. And I did this one just because I think I'm still going to do that. I got this aged. And so you can kind of see that both of these are aged with grit paste and distress crayons. So that's going to go in there. And you can see that these are aged with grit paste and distress crayons. And then I took one of these and I covered it with distress crayons as well as before I did the end with distress crayons, I did a rub on and then I had extra letters from some of the epitaphs and so I spelled Amontillado so that it will go in here as a cask of Amontillado with the bones and the heads since this is the cask of Amontillado scene and for his Annabelle Lee the love of his life I used some more letters and I just put Lee and then the other rub-ons from the remnant rubs and so now I just need to cover each of these with the papers and then I can start putting it together so that's what we're going to do next popping in quickly to show you these covers so I have this paper over the front of this, and then I use just scraps to cover the bottom edge so that it looks like there's a bottom cover even though this is open because I'm gonna put some lights. And then I need something for the binding. So I used some papers from baseboards or uh, backdrops, volumes one and two in the regular line. And so this one's going to go around here. And as you can see, I stamped on it. And so I just used some of Tim Holtz uh, uh, alphabet stamps. And then these are the L and the I from this same set. So I just use those kind of as decor. And then this is from uh, one of Tim's stamp sets as well. So I will put the link to those stamps in my blog so you can catch those and I probably already posted it here when I edited. Okay, so now I wanna cut this a little bit longer because I wanna be able to fold this in on the end like that to make it kinda of look like, you know, how book covers look and to cover up what I did with the binding. So you always wanna make it a little bit longer and then just kind of squish that in, kind of wrinkle it so that it looks like, you know, books look on the end. 
All right, so I will be attaching this one. And it says short stories because Poe is the father of the short story. So I wanted to, to do that rather than the title of one since most of his pieces were actually published in magazines at the time. And now these, let's see. So this is the tiny one. And so I have, this is one of the backdrops from volume one or two. And so I just used the same stamp as the little decor piece on there. And then those are the L's again. And I didn't worry if, you know, I the stamp kind of came off and fell. And so I have a little bit of double stamping there. And I think that's fine because I want these to kind of look old. So I will be, once I put these on, I will be going over them with Distress Crayon and trying to make them look really old. Okay, for the... Uh, second smallest one, I did use Poe's name for this one with a different alphabet stamp, but I still use the same L and I to make those um, decor pieces there. And then again, making it long enough that you can fold the ends in. Okay. And the last one is the one that is going to have this piece in it. So... I just used, this is the decorative trims. And so I masked off on each side so that, because these are long trims. And so uh, I just only wanted it on the, that end binding. So if you mask it off, then when you stamp, it only stamps on the binding part. And then you can peel up the mask. And then this is also from the same stamp set as this and as this. Okay, so I didn't really want titles on a couple of these because I just wanted to kind of leave it. And then don't forget also on this little one that I'm going to add once I get it covered and I get all these little areas covered. Let's see where did I put that. Here it is. I'm going to add this. So that it's like this is his biography, kind of uh, a book of, you know, his biography. And then this, this will be on the front and then it has his name. So, all right, that's where we're going. So I'm going to go ahead and attach these now. I just wanted to show you that before I attached them that I kind of had um, put them on and I had worked them so that I knew where the binding was going to end up. And then I could stamp using my stamp platform so that I got uh, all of the decorations along the bindings and things and the words that I wanted before I attach them. It's much easier to do before you attach. So let's get them attached and then we can start assembling. Here I am with another mess, but I thought I would show you that I got the books all covered. So here's the tiniest one. And then the second tiniest one. And then there was this one, which I am going to light up. So I have it all ready. And then what I did was I drilled a hole in the back of it because it's gonna be covered by the card file. And then I made sure that it went all the way through. And so I want the light, I'm gonna try and get it to stick up in there so you won't see it. And then I had to drill a hole, so I put everything on here the way I wanted it. And then you can kind of see, I just put a few little scratch marks so I know where to line this up and where to line this up. So it'll go like that, okay? All right. So now I'm going to be taking these and I'll just be wrapping them now that I've got them threaded through and I'm just going to wrap them because I just want them to go in that little space up there. Hopefully that'll work. And then I'll probably get some foam tape or glue gun or something like that. And those will stick up in there. So 
so that there so that it'll s seem like there's light coming from from up above let me lay it like this and uh where is my candelabra And then this will be here, so it'll kind of give the impression that the candelabra might be lit and giving it a little bit of light in there, if that makes any sense. And I haven't decided if I'm going to light up the card file or not yet. I need to decide that right now before I start sticking everything down. And then as you can see, I also Got this one finished and I'll just be sticking the lights on the back and with foam tape for this one. All right, so let me try and get these to stay up above in here and I'm just gonna keep going. The next step is that I did decide to light up the card file. And so since I have the back covered, uh, this one, I used my craft knife and I cut a little channel that this fits right into so that I can put this up against the back of that and it will sit flush and it it has been sitting flush, but of course now I'm trying to show you so it's not. Anyway, so it, it sits flush. So no. I drilled a second hole right here. And then if you look, you can see that I've drilled three holes on the back of this. And because it's not going to show, I'm going to have the light come up and go in, in this corner. And I'm going to have some books and things kind of covered up. And then... Uh, I will have some of the lights come out in here and then some of the lights come in here. And when they're out in this area, I will just cover them with the black design tape so that the light doesn't shine through. And I should have just a little bit of light then in each area and it will be covered up by different bits of ephemera like books or um, the eye from the telltale heart or candles or something like that. So it will be covered up and I'm also going to diffuse it with a little bit of some mummy cloth. So I thought that would, you know, I could just kind of tuck it here and there and uh, it'll kind of help diffuse the light as well. So now I'm going to add the lights and then I'm going to go ahead and get these in place. Um, I have the chamber door and I uh, made a frame to go on the inside because it goes like this. Let's see. So it'll be like this. And so I have... Uh, a man with a cat and that is supposed to represent the short story the black cat even though it's a Siamese cat it's okay uh, still goes with the story so I will add these bits and then it's just a matter of uh, embellishing and we'll be done this is the finished product from above and so I put the hardware back on the file, uh, the card file box, and put one of the ephemera snippets numbers uh, things in there. And then you can see that I have them all kind of stacked around on the top. So I'm going to start from this side and let me turn on my lights. And we'll talk through this a little bit. So this is his studio or his chamber. Um, and I have a picture of 
the paper doll with the cat because uh, Poe has a story called The Black Cat. It's about a man who doesn't treat his cats very well and ends up paying the price for it, actually. Drippy candle, candle, candle stick. And then uh, this is one of the ravens and I sprayed it with uh, resist spray. The books with a bunch of ephemera snippets in them. And then I have the lights kind of with some mummy cloth, cloth over them in three different spaces. And I showed how I did that. I have, this is a fake book at the bottom since it's completely covered up. It's just some paper over some chipboard. A little bit of mummy cloth, one of the new skulls. This is a piece of, this is one of the ephemera, but it's kind of a long piece that has a handwriting on it. And I just tore it or cut it into four pieces and tried to make it look like it was, he was in the midst of writing a new story or something like that. And then in front of this bit of tiny lights, I put just stuck three candles, more books. And then this one's going to be hard to see, but I just took some wood grain paper and I cut the heart out of the layers that is a man like for anatomy and so I cut his heart out and I put it underneath some base some floorboards like in the telltale heart after he kills the old man and then I used snippets that said the old man was dead and then here's the old man's eye that drove him crazy and that he ended up killing him because of the eye in a deco frame and then this is just a bunch of books with lights behind it and lights back here. Um, then I have sticking out of the books on the top. If you look carefully, let's see if I can get my finger there because I can't see. Okay, right here. This is the purloined letter or the stolen letter that was in plain sight. And uh, it was actually one of Poe's first mystery or actually one of the first detective type stories written and uh, Poe wrote it so I like to include that one and then uh, on the file I used worn wallpaper on the inside bottom and on the back and worn wallpaper on the chipboard here and then this is the design tape trims here covering the box is a backdrop then let's go ahead and look at the rest of this side before I move on. Okay. Now over here I have an oval frame with a young woman in it and it says for love and death. And um, that is, and I also kind of have this just to kind of mimic maybe some, you know how they used to cover things when they were going to be gone for a long time or it could also be kind of mimicking like a wedding veil because I also have some flowers here and this is from a really like it's two pages long short story that he wrote and I um, I think it's called the oval portrait and so that's why I went with the oval and it's a story about a young woman who marries an artist and he is obsessed with his painting and becomes so obsessed with it he doesn't notice that um, well, I don't want to give a spoiler away, but anyway, go ahead and read it. Uh, the oval portrait. So that's what this represents. On this side, I have the chamber door and the raven who is tap tapping at his chamber door. Quote the raven nevermore. And that is from his poem called The Raven. And then also on this side, so these are kind of the poems together. Also on this side, we have a tombstone and if you look closely at the tombstone you can see that it has a heart and then it says Lee. This is to represent Annabelle Lee, a poem he wrote about losing the love of his life which was really about his wife who passed away. She was very young when he married her and then she was sickly and she passed away. More Tim Holtz uh, stamps over here. And this door, by the way, is in the Halloween baseboards. The raven is in the Halloween ephemera. This is the bouquet. 
and these are the Halloween remnant rubs and then of course the tombstones all right let's move to this side look at that all right so on this side we have a couple of things going on so this one basically just represents the cask of Amontillado that's really all it is to it I think to be completely honest it is my very favorite Edgar Allan Poe story and so uh, that's why I reference it so many times when I make things uh, about him is because I just love it. So uh, from this one, this is a, again a vignette box and I showed how I made this. So here's the um, bat adornment. I have the gates. I have the um, barrel and I tried to put it so that it looked like, you know, it was a barrel. And if you look closely, you can see that I used the remnant rubs and I used the letters from the tombstones to say, to spell it Amontillado. And then I used the cross and skull um, remnant rub. In the back there, you can see the candelabra that I made out of the fork and the drippy candle and then the skull and crossbones and then I just filled it with mummy cloth and with skulls and with bones and I cut a lot of these bones in half and I just glued them in and I glued a lot of these in with with hot uh, hot glue instead of the um, collage medium because it takes so long to dry and I in fact these I glued on with a hot glue so they do move a little bit but hopefully they'll make the trip to Tim and Mario's and there won't be too much destruction all right so over here on the corner is our last story and this story is the gold bug um, and it's the last one I'm referencing here and so the gold bug is um, a, it's like a treasure hunt story short story um, about a gentleman who finds a gold uh, it looks like a solid gold bug and it has some sort of skull um, symbol on its back. And so I used a remnant rub and I put a remnant rub on this gold bug and I turned it gold using foundry wax. And then I used the, these are the seals and um, I used these and turned them gold using foundry wax and I added a skull because on the treasure hunt uh, there is a skull involved as well as the gold bug in order to find pirate treasure. All right, that's what they are in this search for is for some pirate treasure. And then we end with our life and works of Edgar Allan Poe. Thank you so very much for sticking with me through this long uh, tutorial. I know that it was long because there was so much to go over because there's so much detail and so much went into making this project, but I really, really love it. And I'm just so happy with it. And I really hope that you like it too. So again, thank you very much. And I hope that you have a very crafty day, my friends.